Hello everybody, my name is Wilfred and welcome to my channel. So today I'm posting a different kind of video. Some of you are already familiar with the way I make videos on this channel. Um, I actually stream data structures and algorithm problems. I mean, I stream myself solving these questions. Last year, I did a 100 days challenge where I solved uh, data structures and algorithm questions. Let's go to be precise. Let's go questions for a hundred days. I streamed every day for a hundred days, by the way. So after the stream, I stopped doing that. I stopped, you know, solving let's code questions, which was very bad because that caused me to forget it, forget a lot of things. And I no longer remember most of the things I learned. Now, streaming for a hundred days is pretty difficult and time consuming. And I had to stop doing a lot of things in order for me to like stream and accomplish this hundred day stream. And yeah, so after the stream, I kind of forgot, forgotten to keep studying. Now I did not forget. I actually remember to to study, but I just did not have the time. All the time I invested during those hundred days, I had to pay them back as well. So it caused me to focus on so many other things that I just can't remember most of the things I learned. Um, yeah, you can see my profile here, right? Uh, to prove that I actually have like some graphs here to show you that i solve questions every day now the graph is not complete because i did not solve new questions every day I actually repeated questions in order for me to pr properly understand them which is a very good technique for studying data structures and algorithm you have to repeat and as you can see as a proof of that i forgot a lot of things because i wasn't practicing now i decided this year i'll be you know, solving, I'll be building projects instead of doing data structures and algorithm because honestly, I was kind of giving up on doing this data structures and algorithm going forward. But I decided today again, right, changing my mind all the time. I'll be posting shorts every day. I'll be solving data structures and algorithm questions and post them as shorts. And then on weekends, I will do a long form of stream going through all the questions I solved during the week and explaining how I solved them so that the concept actually sticks in my head and also help you guys to also study. So you can also follow along with me as I'm doing this because I'm going to do it from a beginner's perspective. Uh, so I recently di discovered this website. Uh, it is Greg's website. He's a YouTuber, a very good guy. You know, he explains things really well. And this website is going to help you. It's like a roadmap for data structures and algorithms, right? So you're going to like learn a lot of things from here. He arranged the questions by difficulty and by um, levels as a beginner to expect uh, level. So here is, I'm going to try one question and see if I still got it. If I don't got it, I'll study. That's the truth. That's all that can happen at the end of the day, right? So let's try one question. And I'll try to solve this question in two minutes. So we are currently on four minutes timer. So by the end of towards seven minutes, this video should be, should end. So let me see if I still have it. So we have a find closest number to zero. So given an array, an, an integer array, these things are really important. So let me know waste my time. Uh, given an integer array of size n, return the number with the value closest to zero in norms, in norms meaning in the array norms, right? If multiple answers, if there are multiple answers, return the number with the largest value. So here is an array, we'll be given an array. Always go through the examples to actually understand what's going on. I've solved this question before. I think you can see solved here. So that was last year. I don't remember anything, to be honest. But I still will try to solve this. 
Uh, so I have one minute left. The distance from negative one to uh, zero is the absolute value of negative. Sorry, the distance from negative four to zero is the absolute value of negative four, which is equal to four. So we find the absolute value of each of the values here. Okay. Um, those values now are the values we are going to compare to see which one of them is closer to zero. And in this case, we have one which is going to be closest to zero and we return one as our output. Okay, so here's what I normally do. So I'll come here and draw a graph. I mean, to visualize this question in order for me to properly understand it. So here's what we have here. I'll write zero, right? We have zero here and every number towards the, the right will be positive, right? And here, three, uh, we had up to eight, I think four, and let me just put eight here, eight. And I will do the same thing on the left. So these are negative values, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four. Okay, so let's take a look at the second example. The second example has, uh -huh, here's where it gets interesting. Now we have, okay, let me reduce Oh, sorry. Let me reduce this so that you can see my screen very well. I'm so sorry if I blocked this because I was in a hurry. Um, my time is almost up. Oh, I can't solve this in two minutes, obviously. So because I'm explaining, right? I'll just explain and, you know, try to solve it at the end of the day. So um, we have two values here. We have two values that are the same, right? one and negative one are both closest to zero because they their absolute values will be one at the end of the day so they are closest to zero but we have to return one because one is the largest closest to zero so um yeah if you look at this graph here whichever is closest to zero is going to be first we are going to first find the number if it's closest to zero and you know then try to re compare the the closer one with whichever one is similar to it in the array and then we'll return the value so let me write the code for this so first of all we'll assume the first number right is the largest so i'll call this largest and we'll set this to norms right is the norms array is going to be zero and i will say for for uh num num in norms right we are going to find the absolute value of that number now again here's wh wh where it gets interesting we need to find the absolute value of the number closest to zero meaning the minimum right so if the current number right the current number the absolute value of the current number so abs of num right of num is less than um is less than the absolute value of the largest we found right of the largest right then we set the largest the largest closest number to be num right so we say we, because we want to return the largest in its raw form and not the absolute value otherwise we will not need to assign this here we just return it like that or we just assign the absolute value to largest but we want to return the raw the rawest form right if we let's return largest at the end of the day and see we are not done but this is going to be a good start so we are returning largest like this so let's run this again and see this will fail in some case but uh, in the first case it should work yes in the first case it worked because one is the only uh largest i mean closest to zero right 
But in the case where we have duplicate values, right, we need to do something else at the end of the day. So I will, after finding the last largest number, right, after iterating through this array here, the last largest number would be um, one, right? But um, since the absolute value of negative one has been assigned to the largest initially, uh, let me see. Yes, since it has been assigned to the largest initially, this condition here will fail because one is not less than one. So negative one would have been assigned to the largest at this point, right? And we will return negative one instead of returning uh, uh, instead of returning one. As you can see, we have this here. So here is what we need to do. We need to say if right if the absolute value absolute value of the current largest number largest number is in sorry yeah if the absolute value of the current largest number is in norms right then we assign the absolute value of that largest number to norm instead and return that so we'll say norms i mean the largest largest is going to be equal to um sorry the absolute value of that largest so let's put it like this yep and then return let's run this again hopefully this works yes and it did so this actually worked and we can now submit our solution and see if this will work and it did and it's it's fairly good so i still have it on a beginner's level i still got some question but yeah that's just a quick demonstration and i hope you know i keep up with these things and help you guys to also study data structures and algorithm questions as well with that said um i'm going to round up for this video and i'll see you in the next one ciao